Back pain is such a common condition and one of the you know, primary reasons that patients end up seeing a, a physician, primary care doctors included. So I think it's important to realize that you have to really be very uh, tenacious in diagnosing the actual cause of the pain and really looking for what's precipitating the symptoms because we don't want to just treat the symptoms, but we want to identify what's actually causing the back pain so we can be more effective in then tailoring our, our specific treatment to that problem. Well, I think it's important to, you know, to understand the anatomy and in particular uh, just the um, relationship between the uh, segments of the spine, the bones themselves, the intervertebral discs, and also the nerve roots and the spinal cord and how closely aligned they are together. And then you can really have a better appreciation for a patient's symptoms, why they might be having leg pain or numbness. And because of the disc, uh, it could become inflamed and irritate the nerve going into that extremity. So it's important to understand the relationship between you know, the primary pain generating components of the spine. Well, I think the most important aspects, really, of the evaluation are the history, because you can really get so much information by talking to the patient and, and really getting a good sense of, you know, when uh, their back pain occurred, what caused it, and the kind of symptoms they're having. And then the physical exam, I mean, that's really key to do a very thorough orthopedic and neurologic exam to really kind of tweak out, you know, the symptoms and the findings that really may be pointing more toward a disc or more toward muscle spasm, for example. And the non-surgical treatments are really the mainstay of treating back pain because 95% of all back pain is non-surgical. So, you know, typically we're going to be approaching that with, a, you know, pharmacologic intervention like muscle relaxants, anti-inflammatories, and analgesics for pain. But also we want to incorporate physical therapy, uh, maybe uh, different types of, you know, education as far as body mechanics and exercises that patients can do at home. And then we, we also can add in, you know, types of injections in the office, maybe trigger point injections for muscle spasm, or if the patient has a diagnostic study like an MRI and they haven't improved with conservative treatment, then that's when we really kind of bring in some of the interventional spine options like epidurals or medial branch blocks or some of the more, um, you know, uh, in invasive types of injection procedures.